Hey guys, Linkley here, back with another YouTube video. Today we will be reviewing the uh, G502X. Now I got the original G502 here, or whatever's left of it. I don't even know what this is meant to be anymore, but it looks disgusting. Uh, I definitely need this upgrade. Apart from the skeletonized uh, shadow of what this once was, uh, let's move on to the new G502X. So uh, this is Logitech's new release that just came out maybe uh, half a month ago. Uh, first premiering at PAX 2022 in Australia. Uh, been there, seen that. Had a feel, it's not bad. It's certainly very much like the original. And uh, definitely up to that kind of quality standard from what I can see. Let's peel this up. There you go. Just comes out like that. And there you go. Just a uh, price tag. What's this? Get a little switch here. Um, switch cap for your fire button or what used to be all the DPI switch but yeah so that's there for your sniper button I use that for um, bringing out my primary so like the AK or the AWP and CS and yeah it's still a bit I would say it was rubberized plastic but this just looks like pure rubber on a piece of plastic which is good which is good because rubberized plastic always sucks Okay, uh, in the box, right, we've got this wonderful thing, encased, completely encased, and we got a, kind of a cord that looks like it's from a WMO 1.0, so like the old wheel mouse opticals from back in 2003 and yonder. Uh, what have we got? Manual, safety information that no one's gonna read. Uh, and we got this, uh, piece of paper. Like I bought a beer or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my friends are hitting me up to play Valorant, I can't do it right now. i just bang that out real quick. Alright, so. Let's continue. Uh, we got this. And, ooh, ooh, that is a new scroll wheel design for sure. I think that is completely... That's metal. That, that's still metal but it's much lighter than what it used to be. I have a scale here, so we can double check what it actually weighs. They say it's meant to weigh like uh, about 90 something grams. I'll just cross verify that. It's a pretty old potato from back in like 2014. Scale. It's as old as my mouse. Okay. Cordless. Wow, this is, this is so light, this is like, um... Way lighter than what it says on the box. From what I can see here, it's fluctuating between... 82 to 85 grams. My G502 modified is... grams? Is 92.8 grams. With paracord, and this is just with the default cord. The, the default cord can be changed, and it would lower maybe two, three grams. So, 85 grams of the cord on the table. If you lift it up a bit, it becomes near 80. Very impressive. Very good from Logitech. Did not expect to see some weight reduction that insane. But yeah, that's nearly 30 grams off of the original G502 Proteus core and about a whole 10 grams off of my current G502. Very impressive. G9 button still here. You got your little um, scroll wheel, free scroll. Very good quality. Um, I will change this out for the blue scroll wheel. All right, good night. So it's just one of my mates logging off. But yeah, uh, generally much lighter, feel, you can squeeze that really hard, and uh, yeah, it doesn't creak, doesn't really bend or anything, right? Very good Teflons, no sharp corners, that's very, very good, coming from the, uh, the horrendous tragedy coming off of the G502 Proteus, where um, it had like very sharp edges at the top, at the bottom, and then in the middle was a hexagon, maybe with a radius half the size of this. It was basically, if you run it on a cloth pad, it would tear the Teflon off by the end of like half a month. 
So yeah, uh, really good news for anyone using a Razer mouse pad, like a control. Control was the biggest issue with the G502 originally. So pretty much all the users of the original had to replace their mouse feet. I used um, just round Teflon pads. These are still like the gold standard of Teflon. This is like a probably close to version PDFE. It might not be because it could just be dyed on the top and then the bottom. Yeah, you can't really tell just by looking at it, but we'll have to see what happens to it over time. Because the original mouse feed of the 502, uh, it was layers, right? So first layer was adhesive, second layer was a layer of plastic, and then third layer was adhesive again, and then there was Teflon, and then there was adhesive again, and then there was another layer of Teflon. So that, that was crap. It's good for cushioning, it's good for damping, but it's horrible for glide because once you wear through that layer, or if it rips off by accident, you're gone. You need to replace all the feet. This one looks like it's a, a fair amount thicker. This could, honestly, from what I can see, be a whole piece of Teflon through and through. Straight to the adhesive. Oh yeah. Hopefully I'm not boring you guys too much. There's the, um, the new sensor and everything. It's made in China, designed in Europe, probably. It's not bad. It's not bad at all, um, yeah. Sensor, let's see if the sensor rattles anymore, because, um... Yeah, do you, let me see if I can find something to poke it with. Oh, I've got a dead Xiaomi toothbrush here. Let's just... no. Oh. Hair of scissors is even better. Alright, so we'll see if this thing actually moves at all. So, it's very tricky to see. But yeah, that's good, that's really good. So the plastic lens refractor does not move in the G502X, which is a major improvement from the 502 and the Hero series, where the uh, the sensor wasn't like solidly mounted to the actual housing of the shell. So yeah, all in all, very good mouse. Side grips are um, quite tough. Vulcanization of the rubber is pretty good, so from what you can see, uh, 502 didn't last very long because there's too much rubber on it. Uh, the, the back side as well, this is all plastic, which is not bad, I guess. Uh, it could have been rubber here as well, but then again, rubber here would probably just get worn down really quick. Oh yeah. That aside, you can repair these with silicone and uh, a little bit of black dye or even a black texture and then put another layer of silicone on top. But yeah, it's fairly simple. The the feel, let's see, the feel is really good. It's tactile. Uh, the side buttons are a little bit mushy, but seems to be just like the way I remember the original 502. Yeah, G6 and 7 are quite pronounced now. You can, yeah, you, you can definitely feel it when you're clicking, so you won't like misclick it accidentally. The Old 502 didn't really have much of a chamfer on the uh, LMB button, so you would accidentally select the G8 button by accident. So say this had a flashbang out and you click that by accident and you're like, oh no, I, I pulled it out during a gunfire and I lost. Right, so this doesn't really have that problem because there is a bit of a concave that does guide your finger down. And from what I can see, jitter clicking is quite easy as well on this, very very quick. Uh, Switch is a super lightweight, right click is extremely lightweight. I think it has a different weight to the LMB. Oh yeah, right click is like nearly 50 grams. This is like maybe 55, 60 grams on the left click. Middle click as well, exactly the same as the 502. Free scroll, very refined. I think this is new material because it's no longer that shiny chrome metal that was on the old alloy. Hopefully this lasts longer, I don't know yet, but I can say that if they've changed the composition, there must be some improvement, surely. Alright, switches as well, opto mechanical, 100% reliability, millions of clicks. Major improvement from any uh, electrical based. And also, you also don't get debouncing. 
and the delay associated with that. So yeah, Opto Mechanical, great improvement. From the side, you can see that um, they've gotten rid of a lot of the screw geometry that was on the original 502. It looks a lot more ergonomic, right? The original was, yeah, it was ergonomic, but it had a lot of sharp corners, right? Uh, at the bottom, it was all like hexagons and all that, and you see the pointed corners of the Teflon feed I was talking about. Like, this stuff is really horrendous to snag on your mouse pad during like a, a competitive game where you really need that extra edge. But yeah, um, that aside, even after all the drilling and all the repairs and refits that I've done to the original 502, it still runs fine. Um, it looks horrendous because I didn't really learn of the silicone repair part until like these few days, right? But yeah, it is serviceable. I've even got a Chinese scroll wheel on it and this is pure plastic. It weighs less than like uh, one or two grams. So it's still going to be lighter than this, and that might be one of the modifications that I'll chuck on this first. So, this assembly video will um, probably be coming soon as well. But uh, from what I can see, first impressions, absolutely blown away. I, I cannot express in words how well Logitech has made the sequel to the original 502. All that weighs now is a lightweight version. A super light 502 will fly off the shelves. But yeah, here's the detachable switch. Very, very uh, well made little thing. And this is pure plastic. If you want the more tactile version that you know you're pressing, uh, you can use the rubber one. And you can see there's actually a difference in the shape here too. One's got like a lip over the edge and plastic, the other one's just pure rubber. So, if I was playing Rust, and uh, I wanted to draw out my AK, I'd probably switch to the rubber one. Actually, no, th this isn't even a switch. <laughs> this is just a pure replacement. So that gets rid of the button altogether, which is quite surprising. Uh, I would have expected that to actually be the button itself. But yeah, if Logitech's looking at this, please send over a rubberized sniper button, that would be very interesting to look at, and it could have some use there. But it's also good that they've chamfered it off, and uh, put a little bit of a angle gradient here, which is good for games like Rust, where if you accidentally select the wrong item, it really screws up. Right, so, any spray heavy games, you're going to be squeezing the mouse a lot, so uh, yeah, having this sniper button at a bit of an angle, makes sure that you don't accidentally mush it in right, and uh, misclick and throw out the wrong weapon during a firefight and lose the game, of course. So, that aside, good quality parts, uh, very high quality seamless welding of the rubber to the plastic. You got neodymium attachment points, which is uh, very strong as well. Okay, see in depth here, uh, I can't really see underneath the buttons, but I'm fairly sure they would have kept the Teflon that um, holds up the switches. So yeah, I'll go into a second in-depth review of this mouse once I actually open it up, but from what I can see, I'd say in my books this is a high recommend. First time gamers who aren't sure if they need an ultralight mouse who don't know if they want an ultralight mouse can start with this. But yeah. All that aside, leave a like and uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe or I'll drop your mouse on the floor, so... I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. Take care.